Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. Welcome, welcome, and bienvenue, and mon chien. How you doing, guys? Missing football? Yes. Well, me too, but apparently it might be back sooner than we thought. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I'm not so sure, but we are going to be talking about Project Restart here in today's video a little bit. But not only that, I want to talk about Chelsea's number nine, Tammy Abraham, the striker who's apparently close to an agreement regarding a new five-year deal to see him stay at Stamford Bridge to 2025. And I want to talk about him a little bit and offer you a number, a statistic, a metric that's been pulled out of an article from football.london. I was sort of highlighting why really maybe we should give him a little bit more credit, Chelsea's number nine. And I'm going to sort of just talk about him genuinely and speculate about his future at Chelsea Football Club. And it is important, man. You know what else is important? You guys doing me a kind and loving favor by subscribing to Football Therapy. Huh? Why not, eh? It takes you a second, hit the bell notifications icon, and I'll tell you why, actually, because every single day for our lockdown, man has been uploading, scouring football media to let you know what's in the headlines and giving you my opinion on said headlines. So I'm trying to make content all the time for you guys, Good content as well so if you do like it why not like the video I thank you for all your support from here uh, and the past and moving forward I don't know what I'm saying let's just get into the video so before we do talk about the Tammy Abraham stats and news let's talk about project restart touchy subject when you're in a global health pandemic obviously Football goes to the back of the queue with all the serious things in life going on. But of course, football is important to many of us as well. It brings us together. It gives a lot of people stuff to live for. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of jobs involved. There's a lot of stuff behind football. There's a reason why it's the world sport and unites people. Right, I don't want to get too profound regarding football. But okay, let's just talk about it. So the Premier League and the gang are aiming for a restart at the 8th of June next month, which is what, five weeks away? It does seem ambitious when you look at the current state of things, but it will be behind closed doors with testing, isolation, and it will be a peculiar spectacle, but UEFA really, 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 really wants European leagues to sort out what they're doing for the Champions League next season. They've been pretty adamant about that. And of course, billions of pounds of revenue and TV licensing deals and and lawsuits and so many things are hanging in the air, hanging in the balance financially that demand and dictate a conclusion to this Premier League season. Let's put a pin in that just for a second and see what's happening elsewhere. Well, of course, the Eredivisie in Holland have cancelled the season. No winners, no losers, which is a strong stance to say the least. More notably, in League 1, which is a top five league, remember, which is big, right? They've just terminated their season and they've granted uh, the UEFA places to the people who are in the UEFA places, but more notably, they've given Paris Saint-Germain the title in Ligue 1. Big shout. I mean, they had a big lead, not as big as Liverpool's league in the Premier League, but they had a big lead. And now they're champion of France for like a thousand times in a row. So, you know, people are thinking, are oh, England, the Premier League, going to follow suit, just give Liverpool the title? I mean, a lot of people who are anti-Liverpool won't want that to happen. To be honest, man, imagine if you're a Liverpool fan, you've done that well in the season, you would absolutely, you could of course forgive every single Liverpool fan on the earth for wanting them to just be given the title, and it wouldn't be the biggest travesty in the world, would it? I mean, there's going to be an asterisk next to their season regardless, so maybe just like let them have the title, whatever. It would suit Chelsea, Chelsea are in fourth place, they can have Champions League football for next season, yada yada yada, but I think they do want to finish the season for the TV broadcast casting rights to get, you know, make sure there's no lawsuits. Interestingly, right, here's another league that I want to talk about, the Bundesliga, who is starting soon. Now, the Bundesliga, apparently, I heard Raphael Honigstein say that they actually haven't had their last payment from the TV rights money. Obviously, people in the Premier League, not only have they had all the money, they've actually probably spent it. So if they get it asked to give it back, they're in trouble, but the Bundesliga are yet to get all the payments, so they're really inclined to finish the games more so than anyone, so they can get this money that they depend on. Fact is, we can't really compare the Germans to everyone else around Europe because their health service is immaculate. Their testing is far beyond anyone else in Europe, and they've flattened the curve real quick regarding the pandemic, 
and they're basically just leading the way in how to deal with it. So if you think that there's a European country equipped and suited to start football back up sooner than everyone else, it would be the Germans. So European leagues, clubs making moves, what's going to happen in English football? Well, they're aiming for the 8th of June. To me, it still seems a little bit ambitious, but like I said, they'll have strict sort of isolation regimes. Uh, I mean, they're obviously playing a game, you can't self-isolate or social distance. There's talk of people playing in masks. That won't happen. It will be a normal game of football when the football's on, but there'll just be a lot of testing. Minimum, what, like 300 people in the stadium just to sort of have the games, I guess. And yeah, so what does it mean for Chelsea? Well, Chelsea will have loads of players back from injury, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Christian Pulisic, etc. And all players who have gone abroad to isolate with their families and their home countries have been recalled back for training. Of course, all major leagues clubs want about three weeks of training before the league can start again to get up to full fitness. Essentially another little pre-season and you can understand that. But to be honest man, Project Restart in the UK, is it too ambitious? That's yet to be seen. I think we'll all be watching Bundesliga games on TV before we'll be watching Premier League games. So we'll put a pin in that and I'll keep you guys posted as and when new news comes in. So let's move on, let's talk about Chelsea's number nine, Tammy, 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 Tammy Abraham. Of course, a lot of like news came out a while ago that he was demanding 180K a week. It surfaced that that was a rumor and it was nonsense. He is negotiating a new deal currently with Chelsea Football Club, a new five year long term deal to secure his future at the club. Now, does this mean Chelsea shouldn't buy another striker? Of course not. Giroud might not be staying, his one year extension might be of financial security to actually sell him this summer. Who knows if he's going to stay or not. Even if he does stay, Michy Bachwai's future does not look secure at Chelsea Football Club. Although he's been a sort of semi-cult hero at best throughout the recent years, he never really cut it as a reliable striker. I don't want to say a reliable goal scorer because he scored goals, but a striker, a reliable system striker. There you go, that's not Michy Bachwai. So there's a very strong odd that he's going this summer. Now whether Dries Mertens is the guy to fill in to be the rotational third striker slash winger, I don't know. Maybe Chelsea do still go by Moussa Dembele from Lyon, who by the way, are out of the Champions League for the first time in a long time, they will be struggling with finances, so therefore they might be selling the likes of Moussa Dembele in a fire sale. Who knows, Chelsea might be able to pick him up for cheap. I still think Chelsea should buy a centre forward. But what about Tammy Abraham, man? So Football.London published an article on the centre forward. They talked about Tammy being the only man Chelsea need amidst links with Timo Werner and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, which sounds like a pretty big shout off the bat. But you know what? You read down and I'm kind of inclined to agree with them in many ways. Tammy Abraham has a Premier League goal contribution every 114 minutes. As a player who's played low, you know, the main striker, that's actually a pretty good return, 114 minutes. Sometimes strikers get a goal every other game and it's acceptable, which of course, what's that? 180 minutes. So to have a goal contribution every 114 minutes, it's a pretty handsome return. Another big stat that this article from Football.London published was Tammy Abraham's touches per shot. Sounds obscure, right? Some people are frustrated with centre forwards not popping off shots much like me playing FIFA. If you've watched me play FIFA, people will get really frustrated because I don't take enough shots. Now, Tammy Abraham is second to only Sergio Aguero in the Premier League in uh, touches per shot. So he's just behind the marksman himself. Tammy Abraham takes 8.9 touches per shot. So he is always looking to pop off a shot. And trust me, that is a good thing from your center forward. And Tammy Abraham's a good finisher. So you'll back him generally. Now the truth is Tammy has missed a bunch of chances this season and frustrated. True, of course. I mean, he's done very well generally. I don't think anyone would doubt he's done well. He's come in, he's taken the number nine, he's scored a bunch of goals. Great, already done your job, mate. Could he have done a little bit better to make it perfect? Of course. But the truth is, he was playing through injury, and I personally think Tammy Abraham was overplayed this season. If there was another striker that Frank Lampard could lean on a little bit, 
he would have played more, Tammy would have rested more, he would have also perhaps raised his game a little bit to compete with this other striker who was actually keeping him on his toes. And we would have been in a lot better position, truth be told. But really, I mean, all these stats are positive. It's really positive that he's going to sign a new long-term deal by all accounts. But the one question that you have to pose yourself regarding Tammy Abraham and maybe your concerns of Tammy Abraham's ability to be that elite centre forward moving forwards, obviously he's very young, he's got a lot of experience in first team football, he's scored like 60 plus first team goals across all these clubs he's played at, at the Championship and the Premier League, and he's still so young. Is Tammy Abraham going to get better? If you, if, if you genuinely asked yourself that question, right, like, is he going to improve as a player? He's, what, 22 years old? Will he improve? He's with good players, he's got good coaching, he's got a good attitude and a good drive. Odds are, you'll all say, yes, I think he'll improve. So, pretty much on that premise, you have to be like, well, he can be Chelsea's number one striker moving forward. If he bangs on the regs, that's pretty ghetto youth of me, 18 Premier League goals per season. 18 Premier League goals, or like 17 to 22 Premier League goals per season. That's an elite return, that's like Diego Costa numbers. And then Chelsea just rely a little bit more on their wingers and midfielders to get goals as well. He will be Chelsea's starting number nine. And he's not far from 18 goals as things stand anyway. So, and again, let's remind you that this is his first season wearing the number nine shirt. First season playing for Chelsea's first team. Give the man a chance. Anyway, a new contract is good news regardless. So I'm going to keep tabs on this story. Of course, I'll keep you guys updated here on Football Therapy. Let me know your thoughts on the stuff I've spoken about in this video, though. What do you think about football or Project Restart? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about Tammy Abraham generally? Get down in the comment section below and express your thoughts and opinions on that, man. And of course, if you've enjoyed the content today, I'd appreciate you liking the video, subscribing if you are new and all that. Well, that's it. That's the video, guys. So enjoy the football. That's sadly not happening. And I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby